According to ancient Greek poets, philosophers, and historians, the present age is just a shadow of the former epoch called the Golden Age of Kronos. But who was this ancient god, Kronos? All Greek astronomical traditions agreed that Kronos was the planet Saturn. Our own name for the planets came from the Romans. In unison, Roman poets and historians insisted that in a former time Saturn had ruled as a god king, producing a paradise on Earth. It would be almost impossible to overstate the power of this memory among the different cultures. For the Babylonians, the Hebrews, and the Greeks, the most sacred day of the week was the Sabbath, a ritual remembrance of the lost epoch. And in each of these cultures, this holiest day was the day of Saturn, the Latin Saturnidis, or Saturn's day, the Celtic day of Ceter, our Saturday. A worldwide tradition says that before a king ever ruled on earth, a prototype of kings arose in heaven, father of kings, model of the good king, the universal monarch. The Aztec Quetzalcoatl, the Egyptian Ra, the Hindu Brahma. Every culture had its own universal monarch. It is said that the local king is responsible for the prosperity of the nation. In the reign of a good king, the earth flowers abundantly. Why is this? It is because the universal monarch, who set the standards of kingship, brought forth a remarkable condition in primeval times an epic called the Golden Age. Sunrise. To the star worshippers, a symbol of the cosmic dawn, when the universal monarch, the first sun god, shone above the world. The ancient Greeks called their sun god Helios. We assume they were referring to the sun we know, the sun that rises in the east and sets in the west. But in the earliest Greek manuscripts, Helios was the name of the planet Saturn. And the Greeks were not alone. The Babylonian Shamash, always translated as sun, was identified as Saturn. So also the Egyptian Ra, the Hindu Surya, the Latin soul. But Saturn is a mere dot in a starry expanse. What could have caused the first star worshippers to celebrate that minute speck as the sun? Every day our sun rises in the east and sets in the west. But the archaic sun god Saturn did not rise or set. It did not move. Egyptian texts say of the sun god Atum or Ra, the great god lives fixed in the middle of the sky. Surprisingly, the Babylonians used almost exactly the same language to describe the sun god Shamash in the stationary center of heaven. For an earthbound observer, there is only one motionless spot in the sky, the celestial pole. The stars we see are actually cutting a circle around the polar axis, close to the star Polaris. Of course, nothing would seem more irrational than an ancient sun god at this location. And yet, 
Throughout the Near East, the Universal Monarch appears as a central sun called the Axis and the Pole of the World. To the Hindus, the sun god Surya occupied the place of supreme rest, the motionless site. So too the Greek Helios and the Aztec Quetzalcoatl. In their earliest expressions, these figures occupy the stationary cosmic center. There is an astonishing unity to this global tradition. Ancient Iranian astronomers identified the pole as Saturn's home, and so did the Neoplatonists of Greece. Roman poets remembered Saturn as the steadfast star, and Chinese astronomers recalled that, in the beginning, Saturn was the arch premier at the celestial pole. On every continent, archaeologists have uncovered curious drawings of an archaic sun. They do not look like our sun, yet they are strangely similar. And most mysterious of all is the great crescent encircling the sphere of this enigmatic sun. Early Egyptian drawings place crescent horns on the sun god Ra. In Mesopotamia, the crescent is repeatedly drawn wrapped around the sun god Shamash. crescent horn turning in the sky. The image appears throughout the world, a vast crescent, unlike anything in our own sky today. <laughs> 